join me next time where I'll review Pac-Man World. There are ports of these two games to the Game Boy Advance, you know. Wonderful! Okay, so Pac-Man World and Pac-Man World 2 were also ported to the Game Boy Advance. I'm going to start off with Pac-Man World 2, since it actually came out first. Like most other Game Boy ports of the time, and I use that term loosely, it's actually not a straight-up conversion. It's an entirely different game, but maintaining the same kind of atmosphere. In that aspect, it doesn't do a bad job at all, though the compressed audio tracks get kind of annoying and the underwater world is missing. However, my major complaint has to be the platforming itself. Early on, you're introduced to the red roll jump, and while this wouldn't be annoying in moderation, it seems that after a certain point that every jump in the game is a red roll jump, which gets irritating. Pac-Man World 1 is more so a direct conversion of the PlayStation game, and for the Game Boy, it's actually quite impressive. But of course, like the last one, the compressed audio gets annoying, and the factory world is gone too. If you're a huge fan of both the original games, then by all means, play them. If you've never played them before, then just get the original versions. You'll be a lot better off. That didn't take long at all. There's no use now. You can see right through me. I'm as transparent as this jewel case here. I'm only delaying what's going to come. Pac-Man World 3. Back in early 2006, I visited my cousin's house, and as we were leaving, I saw a copy of Pac-Man World 3. And, of course, being a huge fan of Pac-Man World 2, I got excited. That Christmas, I got the game under the tree, and let's just say, I'm not looking forward to this one. Now, something some of you may have noticed about me is that I am very tolerant when it comes to sequels. I'm usually the last one to complain about one. I see Battle for Naboo and Lair as Rogue Squadron games. I actually love Super Mario Bros. 2. I consider Turrican 3 and Super Turrican 2 as welcome additions to the Turrican series, and this is the sequel to drive me crazy. Be prepared. The first thing you should know is that this isn't by the same people who made Pac-Man World and Pac-Man World 2. This is by an entirely different development team, and in an entirely different studio, Blitz Games. So the game starts up with a rather disappointing intro theme. I mean, just listen to the other ones and then compare it to this. Kind of awkward. So anyway, the game starts off in Pack Village, and wait a minute! The golden fruit are gone! Spooky's on the loose! And it looks like nobody cares. Great. So Pac-Man comes home to his 25th birthday, and... Did someone say cake? Holy crap, he talks. To be honest, this is actually the best voice Pac-Man has ever had, especially in comparison to... Ugh, the new TV show. His lines, on the other hand... Don't get me started. My pack sense is deep. His lines are often very, very bad, and he speaks all the freaking time. But anyway, he starts teleporting around Pack Village, and I'm not going to lie, this is a great nod to the original. Oh well, at least this birthday's still better than my 20th. Yeah! With that, he's sent to the first level in the game, a landfill pit. Oh, wonderful. 
As we're introduced to the game through a short tutorial, we learn that the button layout has changed since Pac-Man World 2, and so is Pac-Man's moveset. Pac-Man can still butt bounce and rub roll, but he has lost the ability to flip kick and has gained the ability to punch and perform a butt bounce combo. If you're bright, you might be able to see what direction this game is taken. That's right, instead of exhilarating platforming along with the pack dot munching and ghost devouring we've grown to love over the years, instead we get a repetitive beat em up in rather bland and generic environments. If this isn't a kick in the balls to my childhood, I don't know what is. Uh oh! I'm detecting a rise in energy in your sector, Pac Man. Details of my sector's energy should be between me and Miss Pac. Thank you very much. Did Pac-Man just make a sex joke? Hey, Miss Pac-Man likes me cuddly, okay? <sighs> Let's move forward before I lose my sanity. More so. It turns out that the guy who sent you here is actually Orson from the original Pac-Man world. He needs help because the spectral realm, where the ghosts live, is being destroyed by the various siphons. But wait, didn't the ghosts live on Ghost Island? Well, it turns out that this is where the ghosts were born. So I guess Ghost Island was just an area of residence. It turns out that the person doing this is named Irwin. Okay, so we have an antagonist. I find this to be an opportune time to look back at the others that preceded him. First we have Talkman, then Spooky, and now we have... This is Irwin. Yikes, he looks like a reject from some show on Cartoon Network that I never bothered to watch growing up, mixed with Homer Simpson. Plus, he really doesn't seem like an obstacle to overcome, similar to the villains preceding him. Instead, he's just a joke, and not a really funny one. The graphics are pretty ugly. I think the models for the previously established characters look fantastic, however, everything else looks hideous. The models often come across as jagged and unpolished, and the textures are just awful. The music is almost entirely absent from the game altogether. There are some songs in the game, but they are few and far between. What the? Who? Who turned off the nice music? Nobody break anything. Phew. Music, where are you? This wouldn't bother me so much if the game itself set the mood, but it feels at that too and most of the songs that are present do the exact opposite of what they should. If you play Pac-Man World 1 and 2 without the music, the atmosphere is still there. Here, we have nothing. A good soundtrack could have made the game feel at least a little more engaging, but no, we can't have that. As I mentioned earlier, the game focuses on beat-em-up combat. The platforming is rarely utilized throughout the duration of the game. When it is, it's almost entirely used as either a transition between beat-em-up segments or during a puzzle. The levels are long and feel very dragged out, and the environments are dull and rather unpleasing. This is a game that gets boring very quickly. Since you're actually teaming up with the ghosts this time around, the guys at Blitz Games felt the need to have at least some ghostly enemies. And that's where the spectral monsters come in. If they were standard enemies in the game, that would be great. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Every now and then you'll be trapped by their portals and won't be able to progress until you eat every last one. This only slows the game down more, and seeing how frequently these sequences occur, this gets annoying very, very quickly. Speaking of annoyances, the pack dots are now completely and entirely useless. In the original Pac-Man games and in Pac-Man Time, they were used to complete a stage. In Pac-Man World, they were used as ammunition, which was awesome. And in Pac-Man World 2, they were used to obtain 100% completion and bonus tokens, allowing you to unlock many of the arcade games. 
Here, they're just there to remind you that you're playing Pac-Man. It doesn't help that they fly out the enemies when you punch them to death, almost serving as blood. Not to mention, the cutscenes throw nods to previous outings like Nintendo throws at Mario games these days. It seems like the game just constantly wants to remind you that you're playing Pac-Man, but it's evident that you're not. So it comes across as really forced, which at the same time makes it feel more distant from the previous Pac-Man World games. Those games actually feel very natural. It feels like you're playing a Pac-Man game, which is appropriate because you are. Pac-Man World 1 and 2, while very different from each other, maintain a form of consistency while also feeling connected to previous games in the series like Pac-Land and the original Maze games. While making a successor of any kind, you need to make it stand out, yes. However, you need to keep either the atmosphere or the gameplay, and this game throws away both. Not just an application to the Pac-Man World series, but Pac-Man in general. The only level that feels remotely like something out of a Pac-Man World game takes place in a birding building. Why is that? Well, because this is like the only stage to actually have a good amount of platforming reminiscent of that in previous entries. The only problem is that it's just this stage. What's a shame is that this game has great ideas that would work beautifully in a Pac-Man World game, but the way they're executed leaves a lot to be desired. For example, you can play as Pinky and Clyde, who have their own special abilities. However, this is used exclusively for puzzle solving. Though this does raise a question. So, Pinky, do you remember that insanely creepy crush you had on me? We're not going to mention that at all? Nope! Yeah, I think that might be for the best. Then there's Talkman. Yes, you can play as Talkman. Which could have been so awesome! Remember the final battle in the original where he had all of your abilities except insanely overpowered? However, here you can only swing your arms around like a dancing monkey. Though on the bright side, some of the humor can be pretty funny. Don't get me wrong, most of it is really bad, but there are exceptions. I think the best examples are any scene with this crazy guy. Any scene with him is absolutely hysterical. Just listen to this. Light! Fresh air! Oh, how good it feels. Let me look upon you, my fellow free creature. You wonderful little yellow ball. I I'm sorry, what are you exactly? I'm Pac-Man. Um, why are you holding a spoon? This is my salvation, the tool of my liberty from the mighty fortress. Away from the clinking chains, the burning eyes. Oh, those burning eyes, red and glowing in the darkness. They see everything, everything. So you dug your way out of Irwin's fortress with spoons. They whisper to you, whisper in words and whistles. They tried to take my mind. Oh, yes. They didn't get it, though. Didn't get it. Okay, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, you clearly need some alone time. Goodbye! Watch out for the burning eyes! Trying to take my life. Only just escaped with my marbles. I'm getting spectral readings in this area, Pac-Man. Aha! Uh -huh. Spectrals! I've seen them! They come through the walls! After several boring levels, we finally get to the final boss, and it's actually not bad. After that, we get treated to... Pac-Man killing Irwin? Okay, what the hell? I mean, in the first game, he destroyed Talkman and ate Orson. In the second, he imprisoned Spooky, and here, he kills a child? Aww, beams of raw power are cute. And you're making jokes about it? And then you abandon the ghost despite the fact that without them, you wouldn't have gone home? What a prick! So yeah, in short, the ending sucks. In conclusion, this isn't a bad game. It is playable, you can get through it, and if this looks like the kind of game that you like, then go ahead and play it. However, as a sequel, yikes! This is one of the worst sequels I have ever seen to anything. It's like if they took Mario, threw him into hell, and gave him a freaking machine gun to shoot demons with while cursing up a storm. A sequel should be different from its predecessor, yes. However, Blitz Games went way, way overboard here. 
So if you're looking for something resembling Pac-Man World 1 and 2, you're not going to find it here. I'll see you next time where I'll cover the racing game Pac-Man World Rally, and the 3D maze game Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness.